Welcome back to Cinematic. I'm Ryan and it's been a while, I think, since I've properly introduced what I'm doing here. This is a series I've called Cinematic. We are watching a lot of kung fu movies and that's, I guess, pretty much it. <laughs> but we do one a week ish, I say we, there's, there's more people around than you see, and it is mostly me talking, but we do one a week ish, and basically I'm making my way through this list I compiled on Letterboxd, there's a link down in the description, and I'm learning as I go. I'm no expert, but I am enjoying all of these movies to some degree. I'm gonna say there's not a bad one in the bunch. Obviously your mileage may vary, but just having a grand old time as I go. And maybe that's the best description of what's going on here. So this week we're doing Warriors 2. I mentioned last time that I had started watching this because my copy of Zoo, Warriors from the Magic Mountain, first didn't exist and then hadn't arrived yet. But when that arrived, I went back to that. So I finished watching Warriors 2 for this week. But it's not the first time I mentioned this. This was one of the other... In fact, okay. He's done more... Wing Chun movie since, speaking of Sammo Hung, he did direct this one as well. But we last spoke of this during Prodigal Son, which was the second, and was a recommendation from Mitch. Thank you, Mitch, again. Uh, but this was the first Wing Chun movie he did, Warriors 2. So it made my list for that reason. I just didn't know I was going to go back to it. But when Zoo Warriors hadn't arrived yet, I looked at Evelyn, my daughter, who was sitting next to me, and said, hey, you want to watch a Sammo? And so we did, although she dropped out about 15 minutes or so into the movie. She's got a busy schedule. We haven't given her a bedtime, really, so she, I think, tries to stay up. She's incredibly responsible. Look at this, we're just talking about my daughter now. But she doesn't often make it past 10.30 or so, so she didn't do that this time either. So yes, we're going back to 1978 with Warriors 2. It came out in between Enter the Fat Dragon and The Magnificent Butcher, speaking of Sammo movies. And as another Wing Chun movie, as his first Wing Chun movie, it does start with something of a Wing Chun lesson. Or history might be the better word for it. Actually, I'm going to say legend. Because as the legend goes, Wing Chun, also a southern style, was taught by a Shaolin abbess to a woman by the name of Yim Wing Chun, which is where the name comes from, who then taught it to her husband, Lang Bok Chao, who taught it to Wang Wabo, who then taught... Ling Zhan. And if that name sounds familiar, that's because that is the character that Yuan Biao played in Prodigal Son. Here it's played by a man named Brian Leung, who gives it a more seasoned feeling. He's older. The character of Ling Zhan has comfortably entered the Sifu stage of his life, you could say. So he's kind of the wizened man for this film. And I guess the reason why he keeps popping up is because he is roughly equivalent to Wong Fei Hung in the world of Hung Ga. Uh, apparently Lang Zhan was the one that kind of took Wing Chun and pushed it out or systematized it to some extent. So that's why he keeps popping up in this way. He's another folk hero of sorts. At the very least, he is certainly, historically, one of the earliest practitioners, known practitioners of Wing Chun. In fact, According to Eatman, who was, we've talked about, in fact, if you want more on this, go back to the Prodigal Son episode. I go into a bunch more detail on Hunga and Wing Chun and stuff like that. Uh, but apparently, Lang Zhan is the person who taught Chan Wa Shun, who taught Eatman himself, who was Bruce Lee's teacher, and they made all the movies about him and all that stuff, which also can't wait to watch. So that's warrior number one in Warriors 2. The second warrior is a character by the name of Cashier Wa, who is played by Wong Ho, a.k.a. Casanova Wong. So when he, you know, stage names can be a mixed bag, um, certainly when you might feel like you have to choose one because half the world doesn't want to know how to pronounce your name, or, or can't, or doesn't try. I try, but also you can choose a name like Casanova Wong, and nobody will ever forget it. I've heard it before, and I don't know where and have never forgotten it, but uh, he's a South Korean Taekwondo master, so he's got the kicks. Apparently he was known as the human tornado for his spin kicks, and it shows. 
He, he gets to showcase them in this movie. In fact, if I haven't mentioned it before, Taekwondo is something you'll often hear about as a discipline that's picked up to own a martial artist's kicks. It's very kick-focused martial art, from what I understand. So uh, Casanova Wong has it in spades, and he gets to use it up and in the, the final scene. Kind of the, the killing blow is one of his tornado kicks, and it's pretty great. Spoiler alert. But he's also a pretty interesting guy. Apparently he went to live in a Buddhist temple uh, up on a mountain for a, an extended period of his life. I think probably after movie making kind of bankrupted him and destroyed his family to some extent. So I'm sure there's a greater story there. But it, it, I'm not going to say it ends, but it turns into him actually releasing a movie this year. And I think... A month ago, just barely, and it's a it's a Korean film by the name of Tiger's Trigger, and I haven't been able to locate it just yet anywhere, probably because it is so new, but if I could read you the description from uh, the hancinema.net website here, it's pretty interesting. I think I'm, I think I'm a go. Uh, obviously, chronologically, this is going to come last on the list so far, but if a girl takes care of her sick mother and a quiet old man watches over her, I'm guessing Casanova Wong is the quiet old man. Um, the girl accidentally becomes involved with corruption detectives looking for an important item. And even the one-eyed man, which I might be Wang Jin, who is another well-known martial artist, I gather, I haven't seen any films with him yet, but as the one-eyed man who has a long-standing grudge against the old man, uh, gets involved in the case. Accordingly, in order to resolve his long-standing grudge and protect the girl, the old man picks up his sword again and begins a life-and-death fight with the one-eyed man. The long revenge has finally come to an end. So there's actually a teaser trailer out for it. Go check it out. Kind of looking forward to, to old Casanova Wong, kind of John Wicking it up. But anyway, in this movie, he plays Cashier Wa, the second warrior, who is an upright man that discovers almost by chance that his boss, Mo, played by perennial bad guy, Fung Ha Khan. I'm losing track of how many movies we've seen him in now, especially as the bad guy, uh, Magnificent Butcher, Dreadnought, and just recently Zoo Warriors, to name a few. He did play, and by the way, I did find Corey Ewan in that footage, and it's one of the clips I put at the beginning of the episode for Zoo Warriors last time. So, uh, Fung Ha Khan plays the other Actually, not same character, but also Blood Demon. Anyway, Fung Ha Khan is in this movie. He's the bad guy again, Banker Mo, and he has hatched a plot to kill the village head and then take his place. And the first thing he does is this roadside attack, I want to call out, this kung fu fight, because it is carried completely by a man named Lao Kar Wing, who has been behind the scenes in a lot of stuff we've seen so far, going back to Five Fingers of Death, even Spiritual Boxer, 36th Chamber. But I don't believe we've seen necessarily showcased in kind of a one-on-one a -on -one or 1v10, kind of like it is here. And he carries the whole thing. He does a great job. I really wanted to shout him out. So, Lao Kar Wing. The other one I'll shout out is Brian Leung, the guy who plays Long Jian in this. He is not as quick with the Kung Fu, I don't think, which... Works for a Sifu, you know, they can they can definitely get away with that. And I don't know, actually, I don't have a lot of information about his skills or, or history within the, the martial arts space. So I'm not going to say he doesn't hold his own here. And remember, this is 1978. This is kind of when things were starting to speed up. Uh, Drunken Master came out in the very same year. But for a Sammo film, I guess it's it stands out or, or you kind of expect something. But I think I'm just used to what we've already seen in the 80s. And again, we're, we're taking a step back here into 1978. So don't take any of, of that rambling to mean that the Kung Fu isn't good, especially coming from Brian Leung. If anything, I think it helps you appreciate the form a bit more. Like you, you can see what he does and be like, oh, this is, this is not quite what I'm used to. This isn't quite what I've been used to seeing, I think, because it's Wing Chun. So as the story goes, Cashier Wa discovers this plot, has to go into hiding, Banker Mo... Fung Hakan kills his mother to kind of bring him out of hiding, but Sammo doesn't tell him so that he won't fall for the trap, essentially, but can only hold it from him for so long. So Sammo's character, Fatty, of course, 
tries to get Sifu Jean to take on Cashier Wa, uh, who is reluctant at first, but then there's this whole bit that they go through and it, it results in uh, Sifu Jean taking on Cashier Wa as his new student. And what ensues is an excellent class in Wing Chun. Like, some of the movies we've seen already do this, and if I were better at this, I'd tell you which ones so far, but in fact, it might have been Prodigal Son, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Some of them, they luxuriate. Like, Sammo does like to luxuriate in a bit of the philosophy and, again, the the school of martial arts. And this is one of those movies. I want to say we take maybe a good 30 minutes with it, too. And it's typically the point in the movie where, you know, you, you might see the training montage. But even that, I think, undercuts how cool it is to just be in a Wing Chun class with Sammo Hung, or, or taught by Sammo Hung, in a way, like technique and all. So again, if the question is whether or not Sammo could make Wing Chun work on camera, it's absolutely yes, like pretty darn early on in the film, but certainly by the time we get to this bit in the middle. So we see Cashier Wa get better and better until the second fight I want to call out, and it's where Sifu Jan actually gets killed by uh, Banker Moe's thugs, or there's another, I think his, his big bad is called Thunder, so it's some of his men too. In fact, towards the end of the film, it's Yin Bio and Lam Ching Ying that come in and play some additional thugs towards the end to kind of round out the fight, and they're not the only ones. There's a few names on here that we're going to continue or have already heard of before. Mang Hoi is milling about somewhere in this thing. We're going to talk more about Eric Sang Chi Wai at some point, so. The, the crew is back, and they do assist in the death of Sifu Jean, unfortunately, but it is another fantastic fight. And again, I don't know if it's because they're leaning into the Wing Chun to set it apart, but this is another fight where I feel like you can tell. I'm a novice at this. I'm not trying to, to flex any muscles at all here, but the way it's set up, the choreography that, that Sammo puts in place, he is backed Shout out to the Hong Kong Movie Database, if I haven't done this already, because they put the martial arts director front and center at the top of the list on their web pages. so thank you. But this is also a fight where the storytelling doesn't actually take a back seat, and it's probably been a bit since I've talked about this, but sometimes a, a kung fu fight can function a little bit like a musical number or a, a dance. It has a lot in common with, with dance, obviously, and, and choreography, but in, in a musical, Sometimes when that happens, the story just stops, you know, and, and they, there's a song and then the story continues. It'll happen in a kung fu movie as well, as entertaining as both can still be. And maybe this is, this is a case of a little goes a long way, but even just the few lines they put in there between Sifu Jan and his attackers requires acting, you know, requires, again, storytelling in a way that keeps you engaged, so when in the next scene they take the fight to Sifu Jan's entire school and kill every single student except for Fatty, Kashir Wa, and Kam Fung, which I gotta say, the 70s, maybe late 70s and 80s so far, were not as kind to female actors and characters, for that matter, especially coming from if I remember correctly and understand, the Wuxia tradition largely featured female leads. Like if you think about the King Hu movies that we did and stuff like that, I've read somewhere that the tradition was, since movie going, theater going maybe was largely a, a female hobby, that they were more prone to female leads. But, you know, King Hu carried that on into the 70s, I want to say. I just, I feel like that's dropping off a little bit with what we're seeing at this point. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is because one of the surviving members of Sifu Jan's school is a character by the name of Kam Fung, who is played by Cheung Man Ting, who doesn't have a lot to do, isn't given a lot to do, but does great when she's not being doubled by somebody else. And I don't know the reasoning behind that, obviously. So I just, I feel bad for never saying anything in a way, but because there's hardly anything to ever say. So, in this film, they design a three-pronged attack where each is kind of given their equal or opposite to go up against. And 
I, I thought was maybe going to end in kind of a novel, you know, maybe three-way intercut uh, finale, but it ends up being Samo goes and fights his guy, bites his ear off and beats him to death in a blind rage, you know, that type of thing, <laughs> which... This is a Sammo movie. I don't know I've talked about this before, but he is a guy, the more interviews I watch of him where he's like, yeah, and then we almost died, and then he laughs about it, you know, and he's known for hitting pretty hard, you know, you're going to see some real actual connection in the Kung Fu in this movie and in his movies. He's, he is that guy, and this is one of his movies. But his fight finishes up, and then it cuts to basically Kam Fung and Cashier Hua in the middle of their fight. And then it does kind of split, and then there is some inner cutting that's, that's pretty cool between the two battles that are going on. Because it turns out that Fatty got the names mixed up, so they're actually not going up against their opposites and equals. They're everybody kind of out of their depth and have to improvise. So there's some tension there going on at the end that's pretty cool. Cam Fung has brought her signature swords, eight slashing knife, as it's called, to a fight with Iron Fist instead of Tiger Spear like she was supposed to. So... Basically, her swords just kind of clang off his body. This is also where Casanova Wong's choreography gets very cool. And then Mo enters the scene. Fung Ha Khan takes off his old man makeup and then kind of starts floating around. And this has not been a zoo warriors, if you will, up until now. And it certainly never goes that far. I have to be careful how I use that word now. But it is a little left field. And Samo goes off to fight his assistant in what is a full-on comedy. And that's where some of the, the speeding up goes on. I want to say they shot, if I had to guess, at 20 frames. Because, again, it looks sped up like it's meant to, like, you know, for comedic effect. And it works. It's, it's a great fight. And that's intercut with Casanova Wong just going ham on Fung Ha Khan. In fact, I'm starting to wonder if that's part of the appeal, like why he keeps getting put in as the bad guys is because he's a man that knows how to take a hit because he takes a bunch more in this. He's going through walls. It's, it's definitely him too. He's, he's not getting doubled. So uh, eventually Samo takes care of his guy and they both take on Fung Ha Khan for the finale. And it continues to tell a story. Samo uh, basically sacrifices himself. He's like, I don't care. I want to kill this guy so bad now that I will just take all the hits and you can do all the punching. So anytime Casanova Wong's about to get hit, Samo throws himself in, takes the hits. He doesn't die. You know, they don't quite go all the way with that. I think that would have been cool if he died. But uh, he is laid out so that Casanova Wong can do his fine tornado right into the chest of <laughs> Fung Hakan. So Warriors 2 is great. I don't know why I keep getting surprised. I'm loving the continued surprises at these movies. And Warriors 2 is no different. So go check it out. It's another Wing Chun uh, showcase at the very least. Again, not trying to say I'm, I'm that good, but maybe, maybe almost 30 movies in, I'm learning something. <laughs> so if you feel the same, maybe take a look at patreon.com slash Ryan underscore runs underscore two measly dollars is the lowest tier there that you can tip your way to a a producer credit at the end of such videos as these and others to come i having done two cinematics so closely together might take a break for a week and pump out something different but i wish i knew what that was so keep an eye on the channel and we'll find out together